The Isolite mouthpiece is designed as a patient-friendly alternative to conventional isolation methods such as the rubber dam. It's gentler than the dam, it's easier to place, it's more comfortable for the patient, and it keeps the working field just as dry. The mouthpieces themselves are made of a soft, flexible, hypoallergenic material we call Isoflex. It's silicone free, it's latex free, it's available in five different sizes, small, medium, the medium DV, large, and a pediatric size. Let's take a look at the basic anatomy of the Isolite mouthpiece. The tongue retractor is the wide portion of the mouthpiece and its role is as its name implies. The cheek shield looks like a whale's tail. We call the middle part between the tongue retractor and the cheek shield the isthmus. The bite block is soft and comfortable and right here at the base of the mouthpiece. And if you look closely, you'll see the vacuum channels and the illumination path as well. Here's how the mouthpiece is ideally positioned in the mouth. The bite block is just distal to the mandibular cuspid. The cheek shield is tucked into the buccal vestibule. The isthmus is behind the maxillary tuberosity resting on the retromolar pad. The tongue retractor is tucked into the lingual vestibule with the tongue safely positioned behind it. Our first step is sizing the proper mouthpiece for the patient. Mouthpiece sizing is determined by inter-incisal opening. And while that's all very precise, I want to show you an easy way to use your fingers to quickly determine mouthpiece size. I call it the two, three finger technique. Two fingers of opening requires a small or a pedo size. Three fingers of opening requires a medium. And more than three fingers of opening will require a large size. Sometimes you're going to end up in between sizes and in that case, always go to the next size up. Bigger usually is better. You'll want to use the chart labels provided with your system to record mouthpiece size on the patient's chart. That way, you'll only have to size them once and your assistant will always have the setup ready. Mouthpiece placement is easy to learn, but like any good technique, practice is the key to success. Remove the mouthpiece from its packaging and moisten the inside of the mouthpiece sleeve with Isolite lubricant. Attach the mouthpiece to the control head. Make sure that the locking barbs engage. Lubricate the patient's lips with Isolite lubricant and moisten the mouthpiece with the air water syringe. This will make it slide into the mouth easier. Holding the Isolite with a feather light touch between the thumb and the forefinger, not like a hammer, position the isthmus at the corner of the mouth as shown. Instruct the patient to open wide. Remember, patients can usually open wider than they are initially instructed. Now while folding the cheek shield forward towards the tongue retractor, gently slide the isthmus into the cheek area to avoid contacting gag sensitive areas. Continue moving the bite block towards the center of the mouth just behind the anterior teeth. Be careful not to catch the bite block on the corner of the mouth. Move the bite block onto the occlusal surface of the teeth, just distal to the mandibular cuspid. Instruct the patient to gently rest on the bite block. Place the isthmus behind the maxillary tuberosity resting on the retromolar pad. And tuck the cheek shield into the buccal vestibule. It's that easy. If you find you need additional vertical or lateral working room, move the bite block distally onto the first molar. Here's a couple of tips for placement that you want to remember. One, always insert the mouthpiece towards the cheek area first to avoid touching gag sensitive areas. Two, practice the steps shown until you can place the mouthpiece in one fluid motion. And most importantly, I want you to practice mouthpiece placement on yourself and on your practice team prior to trying it on your patients. It will probably take you less than half an hour of practice time and you'll be a pro.